Good morning, this is Charlie with Only PVC Pyramids. Today's video is entitled Nikolai Kozarev's Research into Torsion Fields, Five Spirals, and Time. This is part four of our Fundamentals of Pyramid Research series. And uh, today we're going to be doing first a brief review of parts one and three where we discuss the existence of the ether. Then we're going to do an introduction to uh, Dr. Kozarev, discuss his observations of five spirals in nature and his theories of time and its relationship to movement. And then we're going to go through four uh, experiments, uh, classic experiments in torsion field research from Dr. Kozarev. One that uh, demonstrates that simple movement creates torsion waves. Uh, the second one that weight increases and decreases can be caused by simple movement. C, that effects of density on energy absorption and release. And finally, that energy absorbed and released is done so in spurts. And in other words, that the energy absorption and release is quantized. So to begin with, let's review this uh, research on the ether that we discussed in parts one through three. In part one, we discussed uh, John Keeley, Wilhelm Reich, and Victor Schauberger. Uh, John Keeley developed a water-powered uh, motor and explored and built anti-gravity devices in the 19th century. Wilhelm Reich uh, built the organ generator and also proved the value of uh, organ energy in health. Victor Schauberger uh, developed uh, vortex water machines and uh, sp spiraling water machines that could actually cut through steel and was ultimately forced to uh, build anti-gravity machines for Hitler during the Third Reich. In part uh, three, we discussed uh, Hal Putoff, and uh, he demonstrated that there's a seething cauldron of energy in the ether, uh, even uh, when the uh, uh, experiments were performed in a perfect vacuum inside a Faraday cage and at a temperature of absolute zero. Harold Aspen demonstrated that gyroscope experiments prove that the ether is like a pitcher of water, that once it's stirred up, it only slowly returns to rest. And finally, the research of Bruce De Palma, who showed that steel balls catapulted into a vacuum with the same force and angle rise to different heights and travel different distances depending upon their spin. The research information that we're going to use today is coming from Chapter 1 of David Wilcox's book, The Divine Cosmos, which is available as a free book on his website, divinecosmos.com. Here's a picture of Nikolai Kozarev, probably one of the, the best-kept secrets in the scientific world in the West in the 20th century. Before we begin his work on uh, torsion fields, I wanted to give us a definition of torsion so that we all understand what it means. Uh, this comes from dictionary.com. Uh, torsion is a noun uh, which is, describes the action of twisting and the state of being twisted. And in mechanics, uh, the twisting of a body by two equal and opposite torques and the internal torque so produced. Nikolai Kozarev uh, is largely uh, uh, unknown in the West, as I mentioned. So I wanted to start with some biographical and research information uh, before we begin. Kozarev's first scientific paper was published at the age of 17, and other scientists were amazed by the depth and clarity of his logic. His main work was in astrophysics, where he studied the atmospheres of the sun and other stars, uh, the phenomenon of solar eclipses and radiation equilibrium. By the age of 20, he had already graduated from the University of Leningrad, with a degree in physics and mathematics, and by age 28, he was widely known as a distinguished astronomer who had taught at several colleges. His abundant life took a most unfortunate and difficult turn in 1936, when he was arrested under the repressive laws of Joseph Stalin, and in 1937, he began 11 years uh, in a concentration camp. Although he did not have access to scientific equipment during his incarceration, he was given the most brutal of initiation experiences into hidden knowledge. He knew that in the mid-1800s, Louis Pasteur discovered that the building block of life, known as protoplasm, is inherently not symmetrical, and the colonies of microbes grow in a spiral structure. 
These expanding proportions, as shown in the diagram below, also underlie the structure of plants, insects, animals, and people. And as so many inheritors of the ancient tradition of the Atlantean mysteries have written when discussing sacred geometry, such as the spiraling form known as the Fibonacci, Golden Mean, and or Phi Spiral. From his observations in the prison camp, Kozarev considered that all life forms might be drawing off of an unseen spiraling source of energy in addition to their normal properties of gaining energy through eating, drinking, breathing, and photosynthesis. With respect to time, the spiraling energy patterns in nature unveil themselves to Dr. Kozarev, as we mentioned, while he was in the concentration camp. His di direct knowledge informed him that this spiraling energy was, in fact, the true nature and manifestation of time. Obviously, he felt that time as we now know it is much more than just a simple function for counting duration. Kozarev urged those to think of a cause for time, something tangible and identifiable in the universe that we can associate with time. And after pondering this idea for a while, we see that time is ultimately nothing but a pure spiraling movement. We know that we are tracing a complex spiraling pattern through space thanks to the orbital patterns of the Earth and the solar system. And now the study of temporology, or the study of time, is under continual active investigation by Moscow State University and the Russian Humanitarian Foundation, inspired by Dr. Kozarev's work. On their website, they state that, it is our understanding the nature of time is the mechanism that brings about appearing changes and occurring newness in the world. To understand the nature of time is to point to a process, a phenomenon, a carrier in the material world whose properties could be identified and corresponded with those of time. This may seem strange at first glance, since a tree falling in the yard could be seen as a product of a strong wind, not the flow of time. However, you must then ask yourself what caused the wind to blow, and ultimately the motion of the earth is what caused it. Now we're going to move on. We're going to discuss these concepts of time uh, in further aspects of this, or parts of this series. Uh, but now let's move on to some of the simple experiments uh, that prove the basis of torsion waves and torsion physics. The first one, Simple movement creates torsion waves. Some of Kozarev's experiments seemed almost deceptively simple, considering the effects that he was able to achieve. For example, the simple raising and lowering of a 10 kilogram weight would exert torsional pressure on a pendulum at a distance of two to three meters away, an effect which would even travel through walls. The pendulum uh, was shielded in glass under a vacuum so this effect could not have been caused by the air. Moving on to the next experiment, uh, weight increases and decreases caused by simple movement. In another experiment, Kozarev had a typical beam balance that's used for weight measurements where the right side had a fixed weight and the left side had a hook for suspending various objects. In this case, the objects Kozarev hung from the left side were, all, were just simple weights, only they were attached to rubber strips that allowed them to be easily mounted onto the balance. Normally, with the weights on either side in a stable position, the beam would stay balanced at a certain weight that could be measured on the scale. Kozarev would then stabilize the arm of the beam balance and remove the object on the left from its hook. Then he would shake the object up or down on the piece of rubber for about a minute, and that's all it took. After doing this, when he placed the object back on the balance arm with perfect stillness, he would again measure its weight, which would always be slightly higher than before. Then the scales would show the measured weight of the object gradually decreasing as it released the energy that it had taken in. So what we see here, we've seen two experiments so far one, the simple movement of another object at a distance in a, would cause uh, a pendulum to begin to move uh, inside of a vacuum. And now we see that the simple movement of an object itself is 
uh, increasing the weight of that object, and that that object, once it's once again stabilized, loses energy back into its environment. The third experiment had to do with what are called latent forces existing after energy stops being generated. And here the word latent often means, or means left over, and Kozarev observed certain effects that continued for a time after he stopped creating any torsion waves and or disturbance of the measured objects. We remember that Kozarev demonstrated how the simple shaking of a weight on a rubber strip caused the weight to increase and then it would slowly drop back down to its normal resting mass once it was placed back on the balance beam. The time that the objects took to return to their normal weight is how we measure the latent force it is capable of holding. Certain objects will gain and lose weight faster than others in Kozarev's experiments. Kozarev concluded that the rate at which an object gains or loses weight is actually based on its density or thickness and not its overall weight. He showed that the loss of weight occurs at an exponential rate, and the denser the material is, the quicker the residual forces will disappear. Here are some examples. Lead at a density of 11 will lose its latent force in, two, in 14 seconds. Aluminum at a density of 2.7 loses its latent forces in 28 seconds, and wood at a density of 0.5 loses its latent forces in 70 seconds. It seems, if this seems hard to understand, we could think of the fact that a denser, thicker sponge, such as the foam used in a mattress or a seat cushion, has much more spring to it than a lighter, thinner one, such as a tired old kitchen sponge. The more of a spring the material has, the quicker it can absorb and release energy. Kozarev tested these effects on a number of different objects, and what he discussed, what found was that the largest effects with maximum preservation times were observed on porous materials like brick or volcano, volcano tuff. So again, to summarize what we found here is that the amount of energy that can be retained and the speed at which it's retained or absorbed is a function of the density of the material. And finally, the research of Kozarev shows that there's a quantization of uh, energy absorption and release. And we're going to spend a, a couple of minutes discussing this before we finish this section today. We discussed Kozarev's experiments earlier, uh, showing uh, that when an object is, is uh, disturbed in various ways, uh, its changes in weight would slowly return to balance over time. However, there's one important factor that emerged in these experiments that does not easily fit into our convenient analogy of the sponge, and that is known as the effect of quantization. When something is quantized, that means that it does not move or count smoothly, but only in stepwise in certain specific intervals. Simply put, the weight of an object would not increase or decrease steadily in the latent force experiments, but rather in sudden bursts. This is certainly an anomalous property for matter to have, and as Kozarev said, in the vibration experiments on a balance, the weight reduction occurs stepwise, beginning with a certain vibration power. As vibration frequency is further increased, the weight reduction at first remains the same and then again grows stepwise by the same value. So far, a realistic explanation of this effect has not been found. As a case in point, Kozarev studied the effects of a 620 gram weight, which he was subject, uh, subject to vibrations measured in hertz or cycles per second. We remember that cooling an object contracts it, whereas heating an object will expand it. In order to give the experiments nice clean numbers, although he used a 620 gram weight, the results from the weight to, uh, were converted to a higher and simpler value of one kilogram, and the numbers shown in the, in the diagram below and, and in the paragraphs that follow are normalized to this one kilogram weight. If you look, in, uh, look at the, uh, in the table before we continue, you can see though there was a quantization effect going on here which we're going, a step function, which we're going to uh, discuss now. 
So as we can see from this chart, as the vibrations of the object rose to the threshold area of 16 to 23 hertz, the object would show a stable weight increase of 31 milligrams. At this level, Kozarev would increase the vibrations between 16 and 23 cycles per second and detect no further weight gain. Then suddenly, as he increased the vibrations on the weight to 24 hertz, its overall weight increase would spontaneously double to 62 milligrams. As he increased the vibrations from 24 to 27 hertz, no change in weight was registered. Yet when the vibrations increased to 28 hertz, the net weight increase would again suddenly jump up by another 31 grams or milligrams to 93 milligrams. Each time that a new threshold would be reached, the initial gain of 31 milligrams would be added to the overall amount. As Kozarev discovered, we succeeded in obtaining five-fold and even ten-fold effects. Let us not forget that this effect quantization occurred in almost all of Kozarev's experiments, whether the overall weight of the object in question was either increasing or decreasing. In order for something like that to be taking place, the basic 31 milligram interval that was measured with the one kilogram object must be a function of its combined volume, density, weight, and shape, similar to the tone that you hear when striking a bell of a given size, shape, and density. As Kozarev rose the frequency of vibrations in the object, new intervals of weight increase were produced, but always in units of 31 milligrams. This effect quantization is actually a very important key to understanding the multidimensional nature of matter, illustrating that atoms and molecules maintain an onion-like structure of nested spherical waves. We're going to be talking a lot more about these topics uh, in future uh, episodes of, uh, of this series, but for now, uh, we're going to uh, summarize the research results that we've uh, talked about today. Torsion means the twisting or the act of being twisted. Microorganisms grow in a spiral structure. These expanding proportions also underlie the structure of plants, animals, and people. And these growth patterns following the spiraling form known as the phi spiral. All life forms must be drawing off of an unknown spiraling source of energy. This spiraling energy is the true nature and manifestation of time. The simple raising and lowering of a 10 kilogram weight would exert torsional pressure on a pendulum shielded in a glass under a vacuum, resulting in movement of the pendulum. Shaking an object up and down on a rubber band would increase the weight of the object, and the speed at which the object would return to its normal weight was faster for denser objects than for less dense objects. Weight increase or decrease did not occur steadily, but rather in sudden bursts. This effect quantization illustrates that atoms and molecules maintain a multi-dimensional onion-like structure of nested spherical waves. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, please tell your friends about Only PVC Pyramids. They can see us at onlypvcpyramids.com and also follow us on YouTube at Only PVC Pyramids. Thank you for watching and have a great day.